Hey guys, hi, how are you? Welcome to my channel. My name is Juan Carlos and today I'm going to review our 2018 Lexus RX350. It's a vehicle that we had for the last three years and today I'm going to review it. I'm going to tell you what it's been like to live, drive and own this vehicle for the last almost three years. Ready? Let's go. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of my vehicle. This is a 2018 model, but it applies to uh, vehicles up to 2021. Nothing much has changed ever since. Uh, this vehicle has the proximity remote control where all you have to do is have the key fob in your pocket and the vehicle will unlock, which is pretty cool. Okay, this is the exterior of the vehicle. Uh, a lot of people don't like the big grill. I really don't mind it. But I can tell you that if it wasn't because the car is black, it will stand out a little bit more. So I kind of like the fact that my vehicle is black. I think that was one of the criteria that we used when we bought this vehicle we chose a black one just because the grill doesn't look as big and this is just my opinion of course and this um, these LED lights are standard as well as the fog lights this is standard equipment what's not standard is these wheels these are 20 inch wheels this vehicle comes with 18 inch wheels and also these mirrors retractable mirrors when the vehicle is locked they tuck in like that, which is pretty nice. The rear end has this pretty clean look that I really like. It's got the dual exhaust, and these are real exhaust tips. Unlike some of the competitors, they have the fake vents or the fake exhaust, and the tips come down the bottom. These are real exhaust, so that's one thing that I like. One thing that I never liked about this vehicle is that it has, that it has LED tail lights, but the turn signals are incandescent as well as the reverse lights. One of my least favorite things about this car is that part of the options is this hands-free tailgate opener. But you cannot have your hands tied with any boxes or anything because you still need that hand-free to put your hand over the Lexus emblem. So I thought that was pretty dumb. I like it. Uh, Ford has that where you do the kick under the vehicle and some of the cars, but this one doesn't. So I never liked that about this one. One of my favorite things about this vehicle is that we opted for this 20 inch wheels. It comes stock with 18 inch wheels and these 20 inch wheels uh, offer a more aggressive look and at the same time still offer enough wall to where you don't get to curve the wheels too easily. I think I did it at least once in this car with the rear wheel but because the walls stand out pretty good I didn't get to damage the wheel which is something that I really like about this. 20 inch wheel package another option in this vehicle that we paid for was the panoramic sunroof which i think is pretty cool and these roof racks i think the paint has held up pretty good it's pretty shiny granted that we keep this car garage at all times both at work and at home the overall craftsmanship of this vehicle is very good. The paint is very thick. The gaps between the panels are very consistent. It's just a very well put together car. That's one of my favorite things about Lexus in general is how well built they are. I really like how the rear window wiper is tucked in under the spoiler. It just makes for a cleaner look. The privacy cover and the cargo area is retractable and I also like the fact that this car comes with an actual spare and with some extra storage underneath this panel. To fold the seats flat, just gotta pull this. They don't completely fold flat, but it's good enough. I actually have slept in this vehicle, believe it or not. It's not the most comfortable night of my life. You do this it offers plenty of space let's move on to the interior where you're gonna spend a lot of time this is probably my favorite part of this car I never fell in love with the exterior of this vehicle however this interior is pretty nice it's very high quality it's got leather and real wood and soft plastics almost everywhere not so much here on the bottom but here everywhere you touch where your elbows touch is very nice material so it feels pretty nice I cannot get over this interior it's so nice so isolated from the road it is a very comfortable ride don't expect this to drive sporty or anything 
This is mostly just like a nice cruiser. Um, it We take it everywhere on the weekend and it's always very nice to get in this vehicle and feel isolated from the road, be stuck in California traffic. But the leather on these seats is very soft. And as you can see, these perforated surfaces offer you cool and heated seats, which is very nice, very useful here in California. You also have one touch window switches, power mirrors, memory seating. My wife uses memory seat number one. And I use number two. So it adjusts your mirror. It's, uh, it also adjusts obviously the seat and the steering wheel column, which is power tilt. You also have a auto dimming mirror. As far as the auto system is the Mark Levinson one. It's also an option. It sounds pretty good. We like it. This is the heads up display that it also comes with and the heated steering wheel the wood is not heated only this part of the leather and we actually use it it's pretty nice another thing that i like about this vehicle is the lane keeping assist because it's very easy to use and when you're stuck in bumper to bumper all you have to do is activate the lane keeping assist but for that you have to have the dynamic cruise control on so you press that and you press this one right here so you're gonna have a, basically a monitor is gonna keep you on your lane. It's also gonna brake for you, even down to a full stop and it can resume after the vehicle in front of you starts moving, it can resume, but it's only, I think it's about five to ten, 10 seconds. And then if not, you have to reset the, the cruise control yourself. You have a regular display and in the center you have this small digital display and it, offers most of the information that you need so it's not too advanced but it does the job so it gives you the range it gives you the miles per gallon after the refuel um, in my case i have experience not great miles per gallon this vehicle is rated let me tell you let me let me read it so that i don't make mistakes it says that it's supposed to be 20 in the city 27 in the highway i we usually struggle to get anything above 25 miles per gallon and we're very conservative drivers maybe highway speeds of 70 70 to 75 and the city is about 18 miles per gallon as you can see right there it says 13.3 because uh, after the refuel it's all mostly my wife that commutes about two miles to work so it's a lot of stop and go so that's not good for this car i that's one of my complaints about this car is that it's not that fuel efficient it's a it's an eight speed transmission it's very conservative. The way it's tuned is for very conservative driving. It's not aggressive at all. It doesn't hold the revs too high and still doesn't give you too many miles per gallon. I wonder if it has to do with, um, with the fact that it's a tall vehicle, it's boxy, so not very aerodynamic. This is the drive mode selector. You can go to echo, you can push for normal, or you can go to sport as it says here. It doesn't do much. When you put it in sport, it just holds the revs a little higher, but this is not a sports car, so I've seen no point to use this at all. And then you have the traction control off. I, same thing, I have no use for it. What is, how good is it to have no traction control for a front wheel drive SUV? Let me show you the engine. So under the hood, we have a 3.5 liter, 295 horsepower. It's a V6 engine with variable timing, variable valve timing. It's an eight speed automatic transmission. Nothing fancy. It's a very, very old engine, but it's also very reliable. The back seat is also pretty roomy. I like it. That's my memory sitting on the front, and I still have enough leg room right here. And I'm about 5'11", a little bit less than 5'11". I still have enough space. Uh, the panoramic sunroof extends all the way out here so that's pretty cool as well and this is a pretty nice place to spend time the interior materials on the back seat they're also just as good as they are in the front 
you have the real wood trims the real leather the real stitching right here and this soft plastic and as well as this hard plastic just like it's in the front you have more speakers so this is a pretty nice place you have more speakers back there you do not have usb connectors back here you just have a power 12 volt outlet and you don't have ac controls in the back or climate controls in the back what you have is this vent that you can close or move around and also the seats are not heated or cool back here only the front okay driving the 2018 lexus rx350 this is a vehicle that is meant for comfort it's a premium experience but it's made for comfort this is not a sporty vehicle when i was when we were shopping for this vehicle we cross shopped it with other vehicles such as the bmw x3 that came out with the redesign in 2018 and also the audi q5 had came out with a redesign for 2018. i test drove we test drove both vehicles and we opted for this one and i'm gonna tell you why this is my third lexus this is my second new lexus and i really thought that i was going to keep this car for longer i really thought that this was a car that i was going to drive out of warranty so at three years i'm ready to move on nothing wrong with this vehicle it's just that i just like to change vehicles every two or three years on average and when i opted for this i really thought that this was going to be a car that i could keep for years after warranty and it didn't happen and that's the main reason why i opted for this versus the x3 the q5 and even the acura rdx we test drove all those three vehicles to give you an example another one of the vehicles that we liked was the acura rdx we test drove the all-wheel drive it's called super handling i think and it was very nice it, it drove very very nice as well as the uh, q5 the all-wheel drive i mean they're all all-wheel drive so we i really like the way those drove and when i was gonna buy this i test drove the all-wheel drive but it's a different system it it won't kick in unless certain conditions are met like slippery roads and all that so 95 percent of the time in california you're going to be driving a front wheel drive vehicle and that's felt uh, the acura rdx was a lot more dynamic a lot more fun to drive and this one wasn't the case, so I just saw no point on paying a premium for something that I was hardly ever going to use or experience. And out of all these vehicles, this is the roomiest. And I also find it to be the most comfortable one. The suspension is very soft and the seats are firm, but very comfortable as well. If you're in the market for a used Lexus RX350, uh, you should know that these vehicles don't change much. So for 2021, for example, this vehicle is almost unchanged as far as i know i think they only upgraded the, the turn signals on the back to full led but other than that is pretty much unchanged so that's one of the things that's about lexus is they don't change much so when you buy a two three four year old model it's still basically the same as the new model at the time um, would i buy this vehicle again probably it's just you know i'm just done with it but it doesn't mean that it's anything bad with it. It's just, I get bored with vehicles pretty easily. So I kept this one almost three years and I'm about ready to move on. We're shopping for a new car and I think it could be a Tesla Model Y. We test drove it last weekend. <laughs> it drives pretty nice. Uh, it's, it's a whole different driving experience with the instant torque from those um, electric motors. This the drive is very bumpy it's kind of if, if you ever owned a bmw with the m sports package it's about the same thing it's a very bumpy but the seats are very soft unlike this vehicle which is totally opposite the the, the ride is very soft but the seats are very firm it makes for a very comfortable ride as well this is my first suv by the way if you don't consider a jeep wrangler an suv then this is my first suv of all and it's probably not going to be my last i really like the sitting position i like the ground clearance especially in this vehicle this vehicle is very tall and uh, it makes for a very practical car when we're driving around we don't have to worry about hitting the curb or anything you cannot see it too well but that is the 360 
camera, which helps you parking. This has been my review of our 2018 Lexus RX350. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.